What exactly is the meaning of the term the crown? The crown is defined as executive powers exercised in the name of the monarch. The actual crown itself worn by the monarch is a symbol of the Queen's executive powers. The Parliamentary Oaths Act of 1866 requires all leaders of 54 Commonwealth nations to swear an oath of loyalty to the Queen, not to the people who elected them. I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. Those who do not swear allegiance to the Queen are deemed unfit for office, including the Prime Minister, police, military, judges, legislators, lawyers and public servants. Canada's National Police Force is called the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. All government contracts are between a company or individual and Her Majesty. Court summons are issued in the name of the Queen, and all public inquiries are called royal commissions. Commonwealth money carries the Queen's image worldwide as a reminder of her authority. The Queen is the lifetime hereditary head of state of Great Britain and her colonies and is unelected and unaccountable. It is against the law to advocate the abolition of the monarchy. After the revolution, the French started calling her the lady, but in English, the queen is still the queen. Originally in India, Persia and Arabia, she was male and weak. But she changed sex in Europe in the Middle Ages and became the strongest of all chess pieces. Here the queen is powerless. Queen is never powerless. For example. What is the cost to British taxpayers to support the queen and her blue blood entourage? The Public Accounts Committee and National Audit Office are forbidden to examine Queen Elizabeth Windsor's family finances. But the civil list payments are reviewed every 10 years. So for the year ended March 2002, the running expenses of the Windsor household were 7.9 million pounds. Family spending, 35.3 million. Security, 30 million. And the list goes on. How much is the queen actually worth? The queen's wealth is divided into three categories. Her wealth is the monarch, her visible personal wealth, and her invisible personal wealth. The queen's wealth as the monarch includes 54 Commonwealth nations worldwide, millions of acres of crown land and resources, thousands of crown corporations, and the corporate city-state of London, which is the capital of world finance. The Queen's visible personal wealth, which was accumulated tax-free until 1992, includes royal yachts, Rolls Royces, racehorses, five castles, the world's largest collection of jewels, 20,000 old masterpieces, and billions of Class A shares in blue-chip stocks and bonds, which have been invested and reinvested over and over again tax-free. Most of the Queen's family fortune was inherited from her ancestors' illegal opium trade with China and the black slave trade. In 1977, the Bank of England nominees was established to hide the Queen's personal portfolio of wealth. As the British monarch, the Queen has access to privileged information, state secrets, and the world's top financiers. She is immune to accusations of insider trading or conflicts of interest. Her financial portfolio includes Rio Tinto, General Electric, Royal Dutch Shell, British Petroleum, Archer Daniels Midland, and the list goes on. The Queen's visible billions are but a tiny fraction of her invisible wealth accumulated through the black nobility. What is the black nobility? The black nobility is a wealthy aristocracy of elite ruling families who solidified their power in the 12th century by intermarrying with the wealthy godfather families of Venice, Italy. During the bloodbaths of the Christian Crusades, this brutal Italian oligarchy captured the trading monopolies. Over the centuries, the black nobility have used their power and wealth to rape, plunder and exploit every corner of the globe. Dr. John Coleman's book, The Committee of 300, describes the history of assassinations, kidnappings, robbery, rape, blackmail, coercion, and terror committed by these inbred families on a grand scale. Today, 
they enrich themselves from the illegal drug and arms trade using whale distance intermediaries. An estimated 280 billion in flight capital and drug money flows into their secret Swiss accounts. Who are these ruling black nobility families? They include the House of Hanover, Germany, the House of Habsburg, Austria, the House of Orange, Netherlands, the House of Liechtenstein in Liechtenstein, and most importantly, the House of Guelph in Britain. All of these family houses can be found on Queen Elizabeth II's family tree. The black nobility are the founders of the Committee of 300, which is also known as the Illuminati or Illuminated Ones. Queen Elizabeth II is head of the Committee of these 300 ruling families. The Illuminati was formed to achieve one main objective, one world government called the New World Order. NWO spells own backwards. All of today's think tanks originate from the Committee of 300 and include the Round Table, the CFR Council on Foreign Relations, the United Nations, the Bilderbergs, the Club of Rome, the RIIA, and the Trilateral Commission founded by David Rockefeller. Since the British colonization of America, many powerful American families have formed secret societies that cooperate with the black nobility, like the Skull and Bones Fraternity at Yale University, which is rooted in German Freemasonry. Its exclusive members are some of America's most powerful and wealthy men, including two United States presidents, President George W. Bush and his father, President George Herbert Walker Bush. Um, we're looking at the Fourth Reich, and then I put under that brackets, or a continuation of the Third, which never ended. People have no idea in the general population, because no one tells them, of the fundamental connections between the Nazis. The people now think, oh yeah, the Nazis are gone, and the American administration. First of all, um, the Nazis were funded uh, out of Britain and America. Um, why is it that they were taking their wages out in wheelbarrows during the Weimar Republic? Germany was in economic catastrophe. A few short years later, they have a war machine that's taking on the world. How did this come about? Anyone else? Um, well, let's, uh, let's ask the Bush family. Because, um, and this is not just me, other researchers have come up with this, and a guy called John Loftus, who is the, uh, he runs the Holocaust Museum in Florida, that um, Prescott Bush, who is the grandfather of the present president, um, he was a major executive of the Harriman Empire in America. And they had a company called the Union Banking Corporation, the UBC, which interfaced with the uh, banking and uh, steel empire in Europe of a guy called Fritz Tyson, who was named at places like the Nuremberg Trial and elsewhere as a major funder of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. And what Prescott Bush, who was, who was the key executive in the Union Banking Corporation, was doing was funneling money and other resources through the UBC into Tyson's empire and then it went to the, to the Nazis and that's where the war machine came from, also through the Bank of England. Only yesterday, every business, every profession was part of Hitler's system. The doctors, technicians, clockmakers, postmen, practically every German was part of the Nazi network. They believe they were born to be masters, that we are inferiors, designed to be their slaves. Um, a number of companies in which Prescott Bush was involved in uh, were closed down during the Second World War under the Trading with the Enemies Act. Um, William S. Farish, whose grandson is now Bush's ambassador to uh, Britain, William S. Farish III, a uh, very close friend and uh, horse interbreeder with the Queen of England. Um, his grandfather, um, uh, William S. Farish, uh, was president of Standard Oil, the Rockefeller Oil Company, when it was um, exposed as supplying the Nazis with oil during the Second World War, while you know, they were supposedly in conflict with America. 
So what you had then was this um, uh, CIA, British Intelligence Operation, called Project Paperclip, which was to get the Nazis, the major Nazis, with all, and, and a lot that with, with tremendous knowledge that are not uh, registered by history, out of Germany, so they would be safe, and into South America and North America, to continue this agenda um, up to the present day. And so this is why you have Nazi after Nazi turning up as founders of, um, and creators of NASA and all these other institutions, the CIA, that appeared immediately after the Second World War.